So typically when people think of the gut, they think probiotics. But what we're seeing is that prebiotics are just as important, especially for creating these beneficial compounds that improve digestion and help prevent even chronic diseases that are out there, the top mm. ones that we all know mm. about. Ideally, this means eating a high fiber diet. So let's break down a typical plate of food for you. How much fiber and prebiotics are in that plate of food and how much fermented food and how much protein and how much fat? Just describe your typical meal. Yeah, sure. I mean, I think I think it's important to understand that, that you know, probiotics are like the seeds you put in the garden. Prebiotics are like the compost you put on the ground to make the seeds grow. Mm. So it's really important to think of them together. And the polyphenols are like super fuel on all that stuff. And it's just a, it's a trifecta of a powerful set of compounds that really have never been put together in a product before. And that's really why we created gut food. And, and when you, when you look at particularly my particular day, I tend to eat a lot of fiber rich foods and I love those foods because I just like them, but it includes a lot of veggies. So tons of raw veggies and salads, cooked veggies. Um, and I, cooked and I, onions. We learned last onion, time you can't have raw onions. Cooked <laughs> onions. And I do, I eat like, for example, uh, the other night we had, I had uh, as, a, as a meal, I had uh, duck breast. I had uh, shiitake mushrooms, which are also very high in certain uh, compounds like poly, poly um, um, polysaccharides that are helpful for immune function. Uh, we had a spare, a spare, I had artichokes. I had steamed artichokes, which have, Again, prebiotic fibers and also folate and detoxification compounds. Uh, I had a, a, I think, a Japanese sweet potato, which again is full of fiber and also phytochemicals and polyphenols. Uh, and also, uh, I had asparagus. I had stir fried asparagus with ginger. So I'm providing all the spices and the, the the asparagus, which also is a prebiotic food, into my diet as as just a natural part of cooking and what I like to eat. So I've, I've sort of learned to include some core foods in my diet on a regular basis that I know are both uh, probiotic foods and prebiotic foods and also fermented foods. So I have I have uh, miso, I have kimchi, I have sauerkraut. I like pickles, being a good Jew. So basically, you know, I eat a lot of these foods and then and then I'll have, uh, I'll, I'll make sure I eat, uh, those are probiotic foods and I'll eat the prebiotic foods like I mentioned. And the polyphenols, so I, I tend to eat a lot of colorful fruits and vegetables. And then as fats go, I tend to stay away from refined oils. Avocados are great. Nuts and seeds are great. All extra virgin olive oil is great. So I tend to stick to those fats. And and protein is just your palm size serving of protein. So whoever, if you're three years old or you're you know 50 years old, whatever your size your palm is, that's about the protein needs you have per meal. And that can be plant proteins or animal proteins. But the plant proteins, you typically need to eat a lot more to get the same grams of protein. If there was one prebiotic food, the people that are listening today, somebody's like, you know what, I'm not eating any of the prebiotic foods. There's one that would, could be a great starting place, maybe a little easier on the palate, but still beneficial to them. What's that one prebiotic food that if they're not including today, they should think about incorporating? Well, it's kind of a fun one and it, and it sounds counterintuitive, uh, but it's noodles. <laughs> And not just any noodles, but a special kind of noodles called shirataki noodles. And these noodles are Japanese noodles that are made from cognac root, this, this fiber I talked about that was in PGX. It's a prebiotic food, but also has tremendous power to slow the absorption of glucose and fatty acids and, and other things that actually drive weight gain and obesity. And you can enjoy them because they have no calories <laughs> and they have no carbohydrates. <laughs> it's just fiber. So it, you can make pasta with them. You can put them in soup. Uh, they're delicious. And and they're, you can buy them now pretty much everywhere. You can buy them online. They're called, they're called like miracle noodles. Miracle right? noodles. Yeah, the shirataki noodles. They have weird ones that are made from soy, but get the ones that are made from cognac root. That's K-O-N-J-A-C, not cognac like the drink. <laughs> uh, and and that's, that's kind of a fun one. Um, we make stir fries at our place all the time. Yeah. By the way, we have no affiliation with this company. It's just something uh -huh. nice that people like to yeah, incorporate. Yeah, exactly. It's a good way to get you off a lot of the refined carbohydrates if you're eating pasta on a regular basis. Nothing wrong with enjoying some pasta here and there. We had some pasta last night yeah. as a special treat. We went to a friend's restaurant. It was heirloom grains and, you know. Yeah, it was heirloom not grains and they're bringing in from Europe and other stuff. But that's not how we eat on a typical basis. No. So miracle noodles are a nice way to like mix it up and get some of that texture that people enjoy from noodles and pasta, but not have it be so detrimental to your metabolic health. Absolutely. And then I think if you really want to, you know, 
get into it, you can have more artichokes uh, and uh, plantains and. How easy is it to cook artichokes? They can look intimidating. For oh people, my god, artichokes is the easiest thing in the world. You just stick it. You can you basically steam it for an hour, and you have to make sure enough water's in the pan or boil it, and then take it out. And I just dip it in olive oil and vinegar, and I just. So dip that's it. it. You don't do oven. You do no, steam I just, it. I just steam it. Okay. And I just wait. It's usually about an hour, if it's depending on the size of the artichoke. Like a little pot and a bamboo steamer? Do you use? No, no I use. I have like a pasta pot, which I don't really use for pasta anymore. But I I fill the bottom up with water, and it's got a metal strainer in it. And I put them in there. Yeah. You can also boil them too. You can just boil them. That's fine. Uh, I like to steam them, but yeah. And then they're, when they're soft and the leaves pull off easily, you take it out after about an hour, and then you just dip the leaves in our. It takes a while to eat. You have to dip the leaves in the olive oil and vinegar, and you scrape off the yummy parts with your teeth. They taste great, and if you're not used to eating them on a regular basis, maybe start off small initially, and then you can slowly work your way. And up. you just don't want to eat the hairy parts in the middle. Yeah, you have to get to the heart of the artichoke, and you have to take off the hairy bits in the middle. But it's fun. It's an adventure. It's an adventure for sure. So, Mark, as part of this mini series, we haven't gotten to many community questions, but we'll toss in some community questions here. And uh, these are from your audience, your Dr. Hyman Plus audience, your Instagram audience, your podcast audience. So let's jump right in. So first question, can you take pre and probiotics at the same time? Absolutely. You want to because you want to fertilize the bacteria. So you want to fertilize the bacteria in your gut that are already there, but also if you want to help you know, grow a little bit more of the actual ones you're giving. So it's certainly fine to take them at the same time. The one caveat is if you're taking prebiotics and probiotics and you have bacterial overgrowth or fungal overgrowth in your gut it can create a war and you can often feel a lot worse. So, And what's an example of that happening, happening or taking place? Well, I mean, if you start taking probiotics and all of a sudden you feel like, you know, you, you had somebody come with a tire pump and pump up your intestines and you're bloated and distended and it's painful, that's a clue that maybe there's something rotten in Denmark and you need to go figure out what's going on in your gut that needs weeding. Is it a bacterial overgrowth, fungal overgrowth that is a parasite? Then you can kind of make a more coherent stand on what actually is working or not. And often one way, you know, uh, different companies will do this is you're taking a prebiotic, it's something new to you, or you're taking a probiotic, you start small and you build your dose up so your body can get used yes. to it. And I think that's even in your recommendations around gut food is you start tight. For sure, start doses, slow and build up. Slow, yeah, exactly. And I think there's instructions on, the, on how to do that. Um, what are your thoughts about jicama, and is it one of the best uh, probiotics that are out there? Definitely. Prebiotics. Sorry. Jicama is a great prebiotic. So if you know what jicama is, it's like, a, I think, a Mexican kind of- South American. South american -y kind of vegetable that is like a big white root or something. And you, you basically peel it, and you cut it into thin little matchstick slices, and you can throw it in your salad. I love it. I love putting it in my salad. It's crunchy. It's kind of got a nice taste to it, and it's a great prebiotic. So it's a go-to for sparking up your salad with a prebiotic fiber. And it's been really interesting to see a lot of companies start to incorporate jicama in their products. Your friend Mona, my friend Mona, they have their product jicama, spelled with an X. We linked in the show notes. It's a nice uh, beverage mixer that people can use for just by itself for solo. And then our buddy uh, Junaid, and we invest in his company's Farmer's Juice. One of the ways, you know, green juices like spark, spike people's blood sugar like so much because they have so much fruit juice inside of them yeah, I know. and he used jicama to improve the taste but not spike people's blood sugar Amazing. and i'm so excited about all those companies those are two of them and there's plenty of others that are out there that are using jicama juice in their products if you love that last video you're gonna love the next one check it out here basically for most people if you just do the 10-day detox diet for 10 days you'll see whether or not what you're eating is driving inflammation. And for most people, it is. That's the first step. And then there are ways to sort of navigate these other aspects around heavy metals, toxins,